Hey everyone, thank you for checking out another tutorial. This video is going to be about bubble sort. If you're not familiar with bubble sort, I'm going to kind of walk through it uh, briefly. There's definitely other videos that explain the concept of the algorithm and the benefits of the algorithm much better than I'm going to. I'm just kind of here to show you how I visualized it. It's a little bit of a personal project. I'm trying to work my way through a lot of the traditional algorithms just to get some cool visualizations out of them. I figured bubble sorting is a good place to begin. So if you have a list, let's say we have two, three, one, six, five, ten. We can keep it kind of simple. We start at the first value, essentially index zero of the list and we compare it against the following value. So we're gonna compare two and three. Two is less than three, so nothing happens. The only time something happens in bubble sorting is if the value that we're looking at is higher than the following value. So two is not higher than three, so we don't do anything. Then we move forward to three. Three is higher than one, so three bubbles up past one and they swap places. You just do that on a loop throughout the entire list. So now that we've done this index, we've compared this index. One is there now, it used to be three, but now it's one. We move forward again, we're back on the three, we compare it against the six, three is less than six, so we don't do anything. We move forward, six is greater than five, so they swap places, five, six. I'm already losing, okay, yeah, so we compared that index, so six, we're back on six because it bubbled up. Six is not greater than 10, so we don't do anything. If 10 was at the very beginning of the list, then we would have taken 10 all the way to the end on the very first pass. The list is obviously not sorted, but that's because we've only gone through the list once. You have to keep passing through the list, doing multiple iterations of the sorting algorithm until the list is fully sorted. I'm gonna try to cover a couple things in this tutorial because I wanna make this kind of modular where I can continue on with future algorithms. I may not make videos on those, but I'm starting with bubble sort because it's pretty simple, it's pretty accessible, but I am splitting it up. So we're gonna have this method for the implementation and we're gonna have this method for the visualization. We'll use that method in the future for other algorithms as well. So just to finally get started coding, the first thing that you have to think about when we're sorting anything is how many things are we gonna be sorting. I'm just gonna call element count equals Let's start with 10. So we're gonna be sorting 10 things for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and create another variable called stages, but I'll explain what that is in a minute. We're gonna define some colors really quickly just to get it out of the way. These are gonna be the colors that we're using for the lines that you saw at the very beginning. And I think these are the exact colors that I used. 225 and then zero. The third color in this list is our background color. So colors, just a couple more things, just a couple administrative things. Circle size equals five. That's just gonna be the size of the, the points or the circles that we're drawing on the lines that show the sorting. And then stroke weight, that's just the width of the line that we're gonna be drawing. So down here in setup, we can call a few more things. We'll create the background. And that's gonna be colors. It's that third value in colors. And then we just have to grab the RGB values. G B. So if we run this now, we should have a black background. That's the background. After this, really the only thing that we have to do, well, we do want to call stroke weight. That's going to set our line width, essentially. After that, we're going to call bubble sort, and then we're going to call visualize. So we need to create a list of randomized values. So I'm going to say def get shuffled values. So I've defined this empty list called V, and then I'm just appending, I'm essentially just filling that list up with 
the value is equal to the length of uh, our elements. So 10 elements, so it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 9. That's a sorted list. Now I'm going to say shuffled. We're going to go through the same loop here, but we're going to feel shuffled up with random elements from the sorted list. We're going to pop those out so that they're not used again. Close all of these. And now I think that if we call get shuffled value, oh, we need to return, return shuffled. So we should get a randomized list of 10 values, ideally. So we say print, print, get shuffled values. Yeah. So down here at the bottom, it's really hard to see. I don't know how to make that bigger. But you can see 9, 6, 1, 3, 5, 8, 7, 0, 4, 2. So it's randomized, it's shuffled, uh, and that will work just as well if we do, uh, let's do 100 values. And then we get a list of 100 values, but it's also shuffled. Okay, so that's how we get the shuffled values, which is what we're going to be passing bubble sort. So we can actually say get shuffled values. Let me get rid of this. We're passing in these values. So I'm just going to put a parameter there called V. And now we can actually start the sorting. So I mentioned the stages list earlier. Each stage is going to be a step in the process of sorting the list. When we think about that, the first stage is the original unsorted list. So we can say stages.append v. We're going to loop through the list until it remains unchanged by the algorithm. So we can just say while true, change equals false. Change until proven guilty. Next, or not change until proven guilty. Next stage equals list stages minus one. That's just a little, two little tricks. So list, calling list like this will copy. And we're just making sure that we're copying the last element. In range, when next stage minus one. So now we're just going to step through every element in this stage. In whatever whatever the state is of the unsorted list at this point, we're going to step through every element. If next stage i is less than, oops, is greater than next stage i plus 1. So it's greater, therefore it has to bubble up. We're going to set a temp value next stage i you can do this in a few different ways next stage in fact there's probably just a swap method that i'm not even using but that's okay i know that this works so next stage now we just set the next value equal to the temporary value that we made a second ago equals t so we've said if if the element that we're looking at is greater than the following element, then we essentially just want to swap the values. Since we've swapped, then we would have to say change equals true. After we've gone through every element in this stage, we can append that stage. And we say if change equals false, break. So no change occurred. If no change occurred, then that theoretically mean well, it doesn't theoretically mean, it actually means that the list is sorted, which means we can stop. I'm actually, now I'm starting to think on my, I wonder if this should happen before we append, but for right now, that's okay. And then once we break out of the while loop, we'll just say return stages. I don't really think we have to return it because we're keeping up with it up here but we can just return it, that's fine. So let's see if we can figure out if that works. I'm gonna drop this back down to 10. We're gonna move visualize down. It's still not doing anything. And we're just gonna print stages after we run bubble sort. You can see each stage of the algorithm 
zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so it is sorting, but I was right. We're we're sorting one additional time that we don't have to. So let's just swap these really quickly. Oops. If change, let's run it one more time. So it's working. That's our bubble sort implemented. Now we can move on to the fun part, which is visualizing what we've done. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out how the spacing is going to work for the columns and the rows of circles. Column sep, column separation. We're going to cast width to a float and we're going to divide it by the length of stages plus one. So this is actually counting the number of spaces between the columns and that's how we're going to space from the edges and in between the circles row sep equals float we're going to do the exact same thing for the rows float i usually do something like this just to make the solution independent of the screen size or the canvas size element count plus one now we're going to have two loops we're going to step through every element So then we're going to iterate through the number of stages for s and range len stages. That's so we're iterating through every element. Then we're going to iterate through the stages essentially, and we're going to look for the elements within the stage. So when we think about setting the x value, it's going to be column sep. That's our essentially our distance from the left side of the co uh, the canvas plus s multiplied by column sep y equals row sep plus stages we're actually finding the element within the stage now we're finding its index and we're using that to adjust its y value on the canvas with the row separation value now we can add a vertex oh so this is a part that I need to add when we think about drawing a line where we don't know how many vertices we're gonna have and we're drawing lines through all these points and we're adding points, we need to add all of these things to a single shape before that shape is drawn. So with Python processing, you can literally say begin shape. Then we just add the vertices as they appear. And then when we know that we're done, we just say end shape. I'm gonna run this. I have no idea if it works. Okay. It actually works. It doesn't look like it works, but that's because I, there's a, still a couple color related things that I need to do. For right now, let's just do stroke 255 and no fill. Let's run it one more time. Okay, so you can see it working. We've got these lines. This is theoretically our unsorted row. And then by the end, everything's sorted. There's our last shift or our last swap of values and we're sorted. The colors aren't corresponding yet because we haven't changed the colors. But that is, so, so far we've got the implementation of bubble sort. We've got an implementation of a basic visualization. And now we can just make a couple quick improvements. Now that we have the bubble sort implementation and the visualization, or at least a basic version of it, I'm going to pivot just a little bit. I'm going to add a method that I've used before, but I don't think I've shown it in a video. And it's get gradient point. I'm essentially going to pass in two colors and I can get what the color is between them at a specific point as if I'm following a gradient or a smooth transition between the colors. So color one, color two, step, max steps. The idea is that we're stepping along the gradient. If we're equal to max steps, then we're at color two. If step is equal to zero, then we're at color one. As the steps increase, the closer we get to color two. So we can calculate that percentage, float step divided by max steps. So this is basically our gradient percentage. We're gonna do basically the same thing for every color, RGB. Color two, zero, minus color one, Zero. We're grabbing the X, or uh, I'm sorry, we're grabbing the R values of both of the colors. That's all in one thing, multiplied by our percentage plus color one X 
as a base value. Now, I'm not going to walk through all the reasoning for why some of this was added, but the idea is that if color 1 is a larger value, if the, if the R value is larger, then we would have a negative value. And all we have to do is add that value to 255, uh, and the logic just kind of works out. So just to save both of us some time, that's the logic behind doing one of the RGB values. I'm going to copy in the other two. So now we have RGB, and then we just return RGB. Okay, that was a little bit of a pointless pivot because it has almost nothing to do with bubble sort or the visualization. So we have our visualization. Let's make sure it still works. It does work. We're sorting the list. We want to start using these colors. So in the visualize method, for every element, I calculate a color for that element. Get gradient point. And we're going to use, remember, this list we defined up here, colors. We're using these first two. So this is color one. This is color two. That's background color. So back here, colors zero, colors one. For the step of the gradient point, we're passing in E. The element is essentially the step that we're on. The max steps is equal to element count. So that's our color. Now, instead of 255 for the stroke, we'll say C zero, the R value, the RGB, RGRB. Uh, there you go stroke let's just run this and just see the colors and there you go so the gradient is working we're starting at this darker red color you can see the R value of this RGB is pretty high red down to kind of pure cyan just a little bit darker okay so we've got the gradient we can add the circles but that part's really easy all we have to do is just draw a circle after the vertex because we're already at the point we already have the point where we're gonna draw it and we've already defined circle size at the top. Let's just go ahead and draw it. You don't even need the circles, you could leave them out, but I kind of like them. I do want to do, let's grab this. And now instead of saying no fill, we'll say fill. Oh, well, we'll say that right before we, that's, I mean, it looks kind of interesting, but we're actually going to call that, uh, before circle because we want to fill the circles but if I leave it it's still going to fill in the whole shape which we do not want so we say no fill right before we call in shape awesome so you can see the row separation and the column separation and everything we've already got that defined so we can bump our image up a little bit just so we can see it a little bit better 750 you can also bump the element count up let's go to 50 and there you go I do want to show you one last thing before I end the video. I'm going to drop the size down a little bit. Maybe the circle size down to four. I'm going to replace vertex. If I can find it, instead of vertex, one little change that's going to make the visualization look so much cooler. So if I run it with vertex like it is, it looks okay, but it's just very rigid. Actually, I need to get rid of those print statements too, because that's getting kind of annoying. Like I said, it looks kind of rigid. Let's make one quick change within this begin shape, end shape structure. We can say curve vertex. And when we call that, all of the lines become curved. They're based off of the points all along from beginning to end. It's cool. I don't, I don't know the reasoning behind it leaving off the first point and the last point, but I think for a sorting algorithm, I think it works really well. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more generative art tutorials, there's quite a few on the channel and there'll be quite a few more in the future. Thanks again.